uh, I gotta say, making a prediction last year that this year was going to be better, uh, and then immediately Russia invading Ukraine was a bit of a miss, okay? Video game tea leaves did not help me out on that one. But despite that terrible start, I do think as we got closer to the end of the year and events kept unfolding, things did get better ever so slightly. And, you know, I think that's part of the prediction was correct, so... But in that, I think the, the real thing about this year for me was that it was just super weird. So you got some, like, refreshingly nice stuff, like Marvel's Midnight Suns, but then also just, like, the devastating badness of, like, 1 in 100 year weather events happening, like, almost every single week somewhere in the world. And unfortunately, we're getting unmoored from the nice palindrome that was the year 12,021. So I don't really have a prediction for next year. I'm hoping we just continue the current trend line of it going up in terms of betterness, but yeah, we'll see. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. But that weirdness, I think, represents the year as a whole. And much like Hades just perfectly encapsulated the year of 12,020, there is a film that I think does the same thing for this year, which will be revealed later, see if you can guess what it is. But first, uh, we must build towards that, and I'll go over a very recent personal event that I just found inc just incredibly confusing. It it's making me rethink my view of what reality is. Um, but basically, I went down to the pub with my cousins and, you know, just ordered a beer. I get asked for my ID, which is fine, even though I'm 30 years old, I look young, it's I get it, right? And I give the guy, the bartender, my ID. And he looks at it and he goes, Well, that's embarrassing. And I was legitimately shocked by this, okay? Normally, I like quick and efficient interactions with people. You know, very transactional. But this time, I actually inquired. I was like, what do you mean by that? To which he gives my ID back and just says, Well your shirt isn't doing you any favors, or something to that effect. And it was this shirt, okay? I'm only wearing it because, to, to illustrate the, the, the weirdness, because I feel like this shirt is like the most standard shirt that I have. Like everything else is like video game or like pop culture related. So then I was shocked even further, like back to my previous position of just wanting the transactional thing. When, and I just said, um, okay, and then I just waited. I just waited for the IDs, the rest of the IDs to be checked and for me to get my beer, and then I paid and then I just left. And it's just super confusing to me, right? Like, is this a normal thing, right? This is, I haven't, this has never happened to me in the last 30 years. And what I know of, tra of interactions with the people, and I understand customer server interactions can be a little bit um, just inhumane and potentially, you know, hostile, given, you know, this video I made on Papers, Please. But I feel like it's a whole nother thing for a bartender to put down the person that's there to drink booze. I, I, look, it could be that this is just what happens now, okay? You just go out into the world and then someone just berates you for no reason. And it's like, it's not even just that it was a put down by a bartender. But like I asked a question to which there was no legitimate reply and it was basically just another dunk. And I'm like, what? okay, I don't, I don't know what's happening anymore. I don't know if social interactions are a thing that exists, if etiquette and all that like societal norms are there anymore, right? Basically what I'm saying is that I really feel like I need to eat a bagel right now. Okay, I have no idea what's happening. So, let's continue on with that thread and look at the rest of the year, the rest of the attention of this video. Alright, so you remember at the start of this thing where I was mentioning that Russia invaded Ukraine. Bad start to the year, but as the year went on, one of the, I guess, the silver linings to that invasion is that Russia has been shown to be a bit of a paper tiger, which is good. But they also did it, and I think, in a in really bizarre way. The most peak of this was within a month of the invasion. And they basically just had this massive, giant military convoy that was just sitting there on a road going into Kiev. And it's just like, what's happening? Does this make any level of sense for, for a military invasion? Even one that's going poorly? Does this make any sense? 
Oh, and did you know that this year was meant to be the year that we got Advance Wars Reboot Camp? Which has essentially just been delayed indefinitely, I assume, until the war is, like, over? Like, has that ever happened before for, like, a video game publisher to just hold a game based on a war for that long? Like, it doesn't actually feel that weird. I just wanted to bring it up a segue to video games and, uh, you know, what happened this year. And we had a release of a bunch of really high-profile games in Elden Ring, a really well-crafted lore delivery system, God of War, really well-crafted dad simulator, and a personal favorite of mine, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, a really well-crafted midlife crisis story starring a bunch of teenagers. That is also probably like the most socialist game possibly ever, at least one that I've played. But additionally, just for my own personal tastes, the resurgence of tactics games this year has been absolutely delightful. You've got Triangle Strategy, a really well-crafted democracy advocate, Tactics Ogre Reborn and Mario and the Rabbids coming out, both of which I haven't played. So we'll move on from that. We also had Marvel's Midnight Suns, a mostly well-crafted superhero friendship, deck building, turn-based tactics, and plant foraging simulator. It's, um, it's a really weird one, like I said at the start. None of it should work, but somehow it does, and I like it a lot. It's probably going to be the next video that I release. Triangle Strategy, by the way, was nominated for Best RPG. Probably, like, the least important aspect of that game. But then it didn't even get nominated for Best Strategy Game, which it is something that the game absolutely excels at and is, like, the major focus. And uh, I just... I don't understand. Okay, Game Awards, continue being the most looked at and yet somehow the least beneficial thing to the medium that we currently have. Oh, and I think it would be remiss of me not to mention this moment that happened at the Game Awards, where some random kid just gets up and starts spewing some nonsense about Orthodox Rabbi Bill Clinton. Yeah, this is a totally normal thing that happens at award shows. Abruptly, we're going to be talking about anime now for no particular- because just, I, just, I just like anime, okay? Most of the year is really good, but one thing that is definitely weird within anime was this year was when Attack on Titan was meant to end with its final season, well, part two of its final season, and as you kept watching it, and as you get closer to the end, there was just this sense that, man, there's really a lot of stuff that, like, hasn't been addressed, and they only have, like, two episodes to go. Is this really the final season? And no, it, it wasn't. It wasn't the final season, even though they said it was the final season. And so, words no longer have meaning now. And, uh, is there an ETA on that, um, on that bagel? In terms of movies, well, do you guys remember the Oscars? A totally chill and normal award show that didn't at all absolutely consume social media and the news cycle for days. Now, I don't really want to talk about movies in general, except to say that Phase 4, I guess, of Marvel was, like, super weird, but, you know, whatever, who cares? Um, the real thing that we need to talk about is everything, everywhere, all at once. A super weird film about nihilism and living a meaningful life. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely go watch it. Um, and if you have watched it, you're probably going to be picking up some of the references and things like that that I've dropped. Well, like, there's been one reference, but you probably understand a little bit more of my reading of this year. Because this is that thing that I mentioned that I think just sums up the vibe of this year is everything everywhere all at once. So, yeah, like, it's as if the gear itself was just, you know what, I, I don't, I, I, I don't give two Fs what happens. You want a land war in Europe? Go ahead. Human rights? Get rid of them. Who cares? How about one in 100 year floods happening three times? in one location, and yeah, sure, at the same time, you can have, like, unprecedented bushfires in Europe. We got you, right? Sure, whatever, who cares? And then you've got Ye doing whatever this is. And Elon Musk can single-handedly bring down one of the most prominent social media platforms in what can only be described as peak billionaire. At least if you look at billionaires from a leftist perspective. And on that note, do you remember how last year Jeff Bezos used $5.5 billion to sort of, kind of, go into space for like 10 minutes. Like, part of the reason that last year, 2021, was terrible and why this year, 2022, After Death of Christ, is better 
is like, do you actually think what Jeff Bezos did actually did anything for humanity and like our survivability or any of or anything that he espouses, right? I mean, it was a tremendous amount of money expended for the frivolous enjoyment of a few people. But this year, we had the full deployment of a profound technological achievement in the James Webb Space Telescope. Something that will end up costing $10 billion over the project's 30 year lifespan. But it's something that we all benefit from. Not only in terms of these beautiful images, but humanity's understanding of the universe will increase too. This year also saw the successful DART mission, where spending a paltry sum of a little over $300 million gave us practical and tangible data on humanity's ability to protect ourselves from asteroids. Artemis 1 also happened to launch this year, which will actually give us insight into long-term moon space shenanigans. And remind me again what the billionaires did with their money? A joyride? Buying Twitter? I love that this is what makes sense under capitalism. Man, I could really go for that bagel right now. From what I can see, the left and like, I guess, democracies are having a bit of a resurgence uh, this year. What with essentially a win in the US midterms, Lula winning in Brazil, the absolutely shambolic performance of the Tories in the UK. I mean, their prime minister being outlasted by a head of lettuce. I mean, <laughs> I think it just goes to show that the fact that that was even contemplated as a thing that could happen shows just how bizarre the year was. We also had nine years of right-wing coalition rule ending in Australia. And to me, this is quite significant as someone who lives in Australia because it points out that, hey, maybe the rest of the population are finally cottoning on to the fact that the previous government were just absolutely terrible. And it goes to show that the media concentration in this country, is, it, it, the stranglehold that they had on like the information seems to be completely ineffectual if we look at the federal election and the recent state election in Victoria. So that's pretty cool. Just this month, this new government, this new Labour government recalled Parliament from their usual holiday that they have this time of year to try and get a new bill passed. Right, and to me, that's almost completely absurd for a politician to be like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to sacrifice this holiday that I have in this position to govern the country. And that's the thing that happened this year. And that was cool. And it was like, and because of nine years of the coalition being in power, that was just, the status quo just shifted so dramatically that that event, politicians governing, is abnormal okay and one last thing about australia normally in summer it's really hot even in spring it can get pretty hot you know we're talking about 30 to 40 degrees celsius temperatures but this year we had people wearing jumpers and puffy jackets in december it's wild dude i don't know what is happening okay climate, climate change is making things very weird i'll give it that and it's at this stage you might be thinking, wow, Tommy, good job just listing off a bunch of stuff. What an utterly useless endeavor. But much like putting googly eyes on a bunch of rocks, there is a purpose to all of this. There is a sentiment that gets bandied about this time of year that goes basically like this. Man, where did the year go? Or, dude, this year has been so short, I can't even believe it. And I think all of that is basically the mind just playing a trick on us that makes us feel that the year has been really short when it actually obviously hasn't. And if you put in a little bit of effort and some thought, after that visceral reaction, a year should never feel short. I remember thinking this back in um, high school where there was, you know, that feeling that would come at the end of the year. But I would also remember the consistency of feeling just how agonizingly long going to school was and having both of those feelings like in my head is absurd like you can't hold those two ideas it doesn't make any sense and so what's happening okay if we if i get this prop out okay so if this is the year the year 
is that basically the mind just goes and deletes everything except these two uh, th these two months. The concept of the start of the year and then just how much time is left is all that's really being contemplated in that moment. So of course, if that's what's happening, it's going to feel short. And so the super secret special trap card that you can play is basically just filling that year full of stuff. Which is basically what I was doing, listing off a bunch of stuff at the first half of this video. Though, I will say, the more personal you can make these events to your own experiences, the better. And even if you didn't do that much or go to many places, the trick is to elevate mundane things and make them even more significant than they already were. Like, you know, you could just mark down like haircuts or making good versus bad days of the week. It's all just about seeing the mundane as significant. And it helps if you have um, a calendar like I mean, like that one, or like the this one, where you can basically just fill out stuff as it goes along. And it's unfortunate because as this year has gone on, I've gotten actually just super slack, and I just stopped doing it. So, uh, yeah, my bad. I'm going to try to do better at that um, next time. But anyway, the... Well, okay, hold on. Let's, let's knock stuff over. So, basically, what I'm trying to say is that the antidote to that feeling of a year being really short is simply to think about everything that's happened, everywhere it happened, all at the same time. AKA everything, everywhere, all at once.